Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following along on my journey exploring the very interesting, fascinating world of fountain pens. And there are a lot of fountain pens. And thankfully, due to the amazing amount of sellers, we have an opportunity to explore this world on many, many different levels. So these are two pens that I recently received a day apart. They have some common attributes that I certainly do like. Both of them have flat ends. Both of them have a dark finial and different design elements from that viewpoint. One is made of metal and one of is made of some type of plastic. It could be acrylic. It's a mix of stuff. One is American made. One is not. Um, one cost about five times more than the other, but cost is all relative to what you feel is the value that you receive for the money that you spend. So we're going to focus on this pen in this review and look for a review of this pen in the very near future. This is the Wingsung 670. Just going to do a quick drive-by. Look at some of the features and we'll go into depth later on. It came in this box which we've seen with the last video and it also has that Wingsung medium nib which I've grown quite fond of. Had your typical plastic condom, crinkly cellophane, and it had an instruction manual which I think was well done because it's a specific instruction manual for this pen. There's been some discussions about whether Wingsung has been diligent in making certain that their instructions are up to date based on the model of pen and I think they've done a good job with this one. So the first thing you'll notice when you pick up this pen is it has some weight to it. The surface feels good in the hand. We have uh, an emblem at the top and we'll see a new style logo which maybe is a stylized W. We'll also see it at the top of the clip and we'll see some nice engraving in uh, one of the two cap bands. And we have English, and we have Chinese, and we have 670. So it's easy to identify the model. And a classic faux blind cap here at the back. Obviously this is meant to pay homage to the Parker Duofold, the newer model of the Parker Duofold. And later on, we'll compare this with some Parker Dual Folds and some other pen makers that have paid homage to the Dual Fold. The cap comes off in about one and a quarter turns, which is good. And we'll see a black section, which again is typical of this design. They followed the uh, classic design elements for the most part. And we'll see one of those nice two-tone Wingsung nibs in medium. I did a full review on these nibs in the review of the 699 piston, so uh, check that out if you want to go into this in more detail. The threads are very well done. You, know, you can just spin off that barrel, and the barrel has some nice weight to it and nice thickness to it. A metal piece here on the section which again is indicative of this design. A lot of them also have a metal ring at the bottom of the section, which this did not do. And a branded uh, Wingsung converter, which pulls off. And we'll notice something which I think is a first for Wingsung, at least the first that I've seen, is this is a very large opening there. Extremely large. And I think I'm always a fan of a large opening like that. I think it facilitates an ink flow 
I've experienced a lot of times where I need to push down the ink in the converter, you know, push out the air and to get the ink flow to be more consistent because the ink will ride at the top. And yes, you can put agitators in here like springs and balls and everything else, but I've never found them to work consistently well. This is a converter which is reminiscent of the con platinum converter with this big metal ring here at the top which unscrews so it allows for easy maintenance and, and I think that's a great design that they've done. I, I appreciate that. Now we're gonna just kind of look at some ergonomics. In the standard uh, dual fold design book it fits well in the hand um, uncapped, unposted. That section, I think, is about as small as I can deal with. I'd like it to be a little bit bigger. Again, to be more indicative of the size of the pen and also the, the way that I like the section to feel. And they've done a good job at having the pen post, but eh, they didn't do that good of a job. You can get it to stick. It does back weight the pen. And when we get into discussing the dimensions, we'll see how the weight of that cap is certainly uh, a major part of the weight of the pen. So I think design-wise, they did a nice, interesting design with that uh, clip. It has a nice uh, rounded ball at the end, but it is extremely stiff. And I found that getting it over thin fabric, you need to pull up on the clip to get it over. So I think that certainly limits the use of, of that clip, at least uh, in, in my perspective. So I mentioned a converter, so I just wanted to show this is the converter out of the 670. This is a converter out of uh, 626, and you can see how they've certainly made a change to that opening at the end. So these converters are not interchangeable. What's interesting is how they've used kind of like a double piston. And here's a converter out of uh, Platinum 3776. And this is their standard converter. As you can see, it uh, more closely resembles, at least the end of it, the converter that's on the 626. But the Platinum does have a larger opening, but not quite as large as the converter that was came with the 670. It only has one seal in that piston, which is interesting. You know, this just basically shows how you can take a design and make some changes to it, and all of these come apart relatively easily, so that means cleaning them and using them on a day-to-day -day basis is relatively easy. I think it's time to explore with the LED light. So if we come into the cap, we'll see how that uh, plastic end is inserted into the cap a good ways up there. This is really uh, not really a transparent uh, resin. If you look inside the cap, we'll see a nice cap liner that pretty well seals up the top of that cap. I mean, there's a piece of metal there that probably holds that finial and that insert in place, but the plastic cap protects that. It's, I think it's a good design. I like it. So here we have the pens we're going to use as a comparison. The Wingsung, which is, I'd say, late to this dual-fold design from uh, Chinese pen manufacturers. And above that is the Centennial from Jinhao, which came out a few months ago, at least from my views. And here, I think, is the one that started it and still pretty much leads the pack is the Kaigalu 316. Comes in a great variety of, of very nicely turned acrylics. And this was another, uh, you know, pen that predated the Jin Hao and the Wing Sung is the Moon Man M600S. Again, great acrylics. And they all share that uh, faux blind cap with a metal ring underneath of it. And they also have a pretty similar shape top finial in black. They all have black sections, and when we uncap them, we'll take a look at how the nibs compare. 
For comparison here, we have a Parker Dual Fold International. And I selected that size because the Wing Sung is slightly smaller than the Jin Hao and the Kaigalu and the Moon Man. So it kind of slots in between those. These are more of the Parker Centennial shape and size. And at the very top, we have a big red Parker Dual Fold from the probably mid-30s with the two rings here. And this is a junior size also, just to put things in perspective. If I had the original Big Red here, which I could put in here, but there's only so many pens uh, you want to compare, that uh, size and shape is more similar to these three here in the middle, which I would say is a full-size dual-fold design. So here we are uh, with pens posted. And if you're someone who loves a pen to post and to be balanced when it's posted, then this design is not going to be one that you're going to be in favor of because all of these post fairly high. In fact, the Parker Jr. here posts the best, and you can see it's also the shortest of these pens posted. All of them have a pretty good size section to them, which vary in size and shape a little bit. They all have pretty nice nibs. Of course, the Parker International here has a nice a fine italic, a nib that you're not going to find, obviously, in any of the Chinese pens. But if that's a kind of nib you wanted, you could get uh, the fines or medium nibs that they come with uh, ground to that by uh, a nib grinder. And the Parker Jr. actually kind of holds its own. That's just a standard 14 karat nib. But you can see this is the classic vintage section where you got a big uh, ring here at the bottom of the section, a very short section that comes up to the barrel. None of these threads are sharp or intrusive, so you can kind of hold any of these pens anywhere. Uh, one of the things that uh, the Wing Sung did is they eliminated that metal band at the, at the base of the section, which all of these have. It has that metal band in between the section and the barrel. So that's, that's how they work. Let's just zoom a little bit in on some of those nibs. These uh, three pens here have a classic number six size or 35 millimeter as is generally referred to in a lot of the descriptions of these pens. The Wing Sung is a slightly smaller nib but it it, show, it holds its own and looks nice in this group. And of course the uh, Parker's a nib and to themselves so they're not really part of this discussion. A lot of these are two-tone nibs except for the Moon Man. So you may ask me if I only could have one of these and I and I look upon value as well as, as usability, ergonomics and everything else. I think the Moon Man M600 really is the best value and best buy in this group. Number one, the weight is fine. I think the Kaigalu, which is probably made as well, but just that weight is, is uh, pretty high. Uh, the Jin Hao Centennial and, and, and the Wing Sung, I don't think are up to the same quality of the Moon Man or the Kaigalu. Uh, but, you know, they have some of their own attributes. They're solid colors, which you're not going to find in the Moon Man or the Kaigalu. So, yeah, if it's something that interests you, look around, see what you can find. And it, none of these pens, I think, would completely disappoint you as long as you understand how you can use and, and work with a dual-fold design. Yes, we're going to look at color now. So here's my color wheel with yellow in the middle there. As we come away, we'll see how these yellow pens that I've put here might compare. So the one at the bottom is the Wing Sung 670, which I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is very, very yellow and 1 is not, this is about an 8. Then this is the Aurora Epsilon. It's a pen I've had for a number of years and probably overdue for a review. Here's a Jin Hao 159, which I would say that yellow is pretty close to a 10. And here's a, a I think it's a Japanese pen, but I, I got this as a, included in something I bought many, many years ago called a Pokey, P-O-K-Y pen. And again, on the yellow variety, it's probably a 9. And here we have a J&J &J wood design pen, a handmade American made pen, which was called a yellow dual fold when I bought it. But... That's probably about a, a six because it's a little bit of orange in there. And I would say that the 
Wing Sung is about a seven and a half. So not as nice as the 159 and a little bit less yellow than the other two pens. So that's our exploration of yellow pens. I always like to do a search on eBay and uh, show you what I find. So if you search for the 670, you'll see a number of different pens. They come in different colors. But what I found, which was very intriguing, was they make a very upscale model of the 670 with a sterling silver overlay, very similar to what Waterman might do, and with a 14 karat gold nib. But the price of that pen is, is over 300 US dollars, which I think is quite a bit. A couple of viewers have mentioned about uh, trying uh, Chinese uh, gold nibs, and I just find that their price to be prohibitive from my perspective. You know, I've bought Pilot 74s and, and other types of, of pens with excellent 14 karat nibs for under 80 US dollars delivered. So paying that premium for um, a Chinese gold nib, I don't think right now is in my future plans, but who knows how things might change. And what am I looking at again for the future? Is in my searches, I found that the 601A has a new version with a standard nib. So I had to get one. I ordered it. It's on its way. And also, Moonman has come out with a, a new model. They've been doing a lot of uh, pocket pen designs. The first one that I think was the M2, which I think was great. Well, here looks like an upscale version of the M2 with a more stylistic uh, barrel, kind of rem reminiscent of a pen BBS 323. And a colorful section, kind of rem reminiscent of the Moonman C1. So this is also on order and coming to me. So something to look forward to in future videos. Well, I've chosen an ink. Dimine Honey Burst, an ink I've had for a while. This is part of their guitar series. It's uh, on the dark orange side of yellow. And the chromatography basically shows it's pretty much all yellow with a Titch of orange, no water resistance. I mean, that's <clears throat> you don't really get to see the ink color until it's fairly well up on the chromatography strip. So let's see how it works on that wing song medium nib. Before we touch nib to paper, I have to show you what I consider to be some of the flaws in this pen manufacturing. It's not a good plating job. If you look at that top ring, you'll notice some imperfections there at the very top. And if you look closely, I don't know whether we can pick this up in the camera, the plating has a lot of pitting in it. That's also visible on the clip and on the insert into the top of the finial. So that's not a good sign from a quality control viewpoint. This is, you know, a higher end wing sung pen. I think it's meant to be higher end and it should be plated to a higher standard. I've looked at some other pens in this price range like the Jin Hao's and the Moon Man's and all of them have a little bit of plating issues. And uh, that comes, uh, the, you know, the cap, the cap coming off in one and a quarter turns is good. As you can see, there's a plastic insert in there. I'm th pretty certain this is all glued together, and that top ring uh, is like the separator between this bottom part of the cap and the top part of the cap. You know, fit and finish, other than that plating issue, is done well. It does uh, fit well in the hand. Unposted will give you those weights, but that cap is certainly like again. This is not a pen I would ever write with posted unless I was forced to. The section, as I mentioned, is a little bit on the small side. We'll give you those uh, dimensions of the section so you can put it in perspective. Now it's time for that. Listen to the nib on paper.
So like the nib in the 699, this nib is very smooth. You do get, I think, just the right amount of feedback on this Fabriano paper, which I enjoy. The nib is kind of medium, not wet, not dry, but this ink is a, a light ink, and the fact that it works fairly well in this nib is, is nice, better than I expected. I took a chance on putting this ink in this pen, but I had high expectations for this Wing Sung Medium, and it did not disappoint. I mean, the nib writes in every direction. It writes the same, and that's a, a nice indication of how that tipping material is, is very well done on the end of that nib. So now we're going to give a rating to this pen. I'm going to give it an 8.9. And it just gets one check for the nib. Even though I like dual-fold designs, I don't think they did a good job executing on this one. The heavy cap is, is not um, a good design. This section could be a little bit uh, bigger to, to be more in tune with uh, the size of the pen. This is where I put it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and another look at a uh, pen design that I particularly enjoy is uh, the dual fold design and, and a, another interpretation of it by a, uh, a Chinese pen maker. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you're getting to enjoy your pens, enjoy putting ink on paper, enjoy sharing it uh, through letters or Photos on Instagram, Facebook, you know, whatever works for you, as long as it encourages you to put some ink on paper. So we've reached the end of this video. I hope everyone's staying as safe, healthy, and happy. It's definitely challenging, but all of us need to do our best. And as one might say, this too will pass. But it gives us a lot more time to be indoors enjoying our pens. We're going to say bye for now. Until the next video. And this is a good nib ink combo.